So today's lesson plan is on power generation. And uh, we have a fantastic simulation for you to watch. We'll make it very clear on how power is actually generated at a generating station. So let's dive right in. Uh, in this particular example, we have here hydropower, power being generated through damming of water. And we have a dam here. We have a, a water buildup here. And basically what happens is that we have something called a penstock. When the penstock valves are open, water flows through and turns a turbine. There's a generator sitting over here. Um, this is the AC generator that you learned about in the previous lesson. And basically the AC generator now is turned by an external force. And that external force is actually the water flowing through uh, the penstock, which turns the AC generator. And that in turn, um, uh, is then stepped up by a step-up transformer, which you learned why in the transmission efficiency uh, lesson. And we then uh, have the power transmitted through the transmission towers and the, uh, and the power cables to your home. Now, besides hydropower, there are other sources of power as well. Um, there are, there's coal, uh, there's nuclear power. Uh, both these basically, they heat up the water and the steam that's generated from, from that is then used to power the turbines which are connected to generators. So the concepts are all the same. In the case of hydro, we have actually water flowing that turns the turbine. In this particular case, we have uh, basically um, steam that's generated from nuclear and coal that also turn the turbines as well. On the other hand, with wind turbines and solar cells, in the wind turbine, exactly the same kind of a model, you have the wind which turns a fan, the fan is connected to, or blades that are connected to uh, a turbine, and then the turbine is connected to a generator. As a result, the, the wind then uh, generates power. Solar cells are another example, there's no turbine here, but basically you have an array of solar cells, the light shines on the solar cells, and they, and they in turn wind up generating uh, power as well. However, there's a weakness with wind turbine and solar cells. You might think it's really free. You just put out a solar cell out there or, or a turbine, a wind turbine out there. However, uh, uh, during cloudy days or if there's no wind, you don't wind up generating any power. So those are the drawbacks associated with wind turbine and, uh, and, solar, and solar cells uh, for generating power. Now, I want to go back a little bit to how power gets to your home. Um, if, you, if you have a generating station, in this particular example, it's a nuclear power plant, and uh, you have transmission towers, there's a step-up transformer that is used, I'll come to that in just a moment, and uh, the power is then transmitted through transmission lines, these are transmission towers that you see here, which is then goes to a power substation. The substation in turn then reduces your voltage, it winds up going to uh, when it reaches your home, there's a further step-down transformer which steps down the voltage to approximately about 240 volts and 120 volts. And that's the power that is used in your home. Uh, over here, when you're transmitting these powers, it's transmitted at very high voltage, about 500 kilovolts. These power substations are used to drop the voltages down uh, before it finally goes to the uh, transformers at your, uh, just outside your home. Okay. Now, um, why, do we, why do we do these, why do we have these transformers here? There are some reasons associated with it. From the transmission efficiency lesson plan, you can see that the reason why we have to step up the voltage from 20 kilovolts to 500 kilovolts, that is to manage the power loss that takes place. In other words, to reduce the amount of power loss while you're transmitting. Okay. If you want to know why, Go to the transmission efficiency lesson plan and you can see that there. Um, I think I've talked about all this over here, so let's go to the next slide. Um, now DC generators, we can use DC generators, generators instead of AC generators. However, there are some drawbacks associated with DC generators. It's not easy to step up the voltage in a DC generator. I mean, we can use transformers to step up an AC voltage. But transformers cannot be used to step up DC voltages. And if you remember from your uh, lesson plan on transformers, it's the changing voltage that's causing it, or changing current, 
that's causing it to be able to transform a voltage. If the current isn't changing and the voltage isn't changing, you cannot change or transform the voltages using a transformer. So, um, as a result, what basically happens here is that uh, it is easy to transform voltages you, if you have AC power, alternating current, in other words, AC power as opposed to DC uh, generators. Now, Tesla was the one who came up with the AC generator, whereas Thomas Edison came up with the DC generators. Now, uh, because of the ease in to, to step up the voltages associated with, uh, uh, with power generation, AC generators won out over DC generators. And so now you basically have in all power stations AC generators. Now there are some cases where you can step up. You can you can uh, use um, uh, high voltage DC uh, generators, uh, but those are very limited in uh, in nature. So, what are the different ways to generate electrical power? Some examples. Electrical power can be generated um, using hydro. We saw an example of that. You could have nuclear, uh, you can have coal. In hydro, uh, damming the water is what's basically used to generate the power, uh, the flow of water or rushing water that turns the turbine. Uh, in case of nuclear and in case of coal, you basically are heating the water up to generate steam and the steam uh, causes the turbines to, uh, to rotate. Uh, we can also use solar and wind generators to generate power. However, there are some drawbacks associated with it. The drawbacks are basically that on a cloudy day uh, if, uh, or if there's no wind, then you're not able to generate power using those methods. Why are DC generators not used? Primarily for the reason that it's not easy to step up or step down the voltages. Now, uh, it's not that it's not possible to step up the volt uh, DC voltages. There are, there are techniques to do that. You can step up a DC voltage. Um, and in a nutshell, you basically transform that uh, through a very complicated method to an AC voltage. You use transformers to step it up and then you transform it back into DC voltages. That's one way to do it. Uh, it's not that it's not possible, but it's not easy to do so. Um, so as a result, we use AC generators. Why? Because when we step up the voltages, we reduce the power lost through transmission lines. And this ends the lesson plan on power generation. So now we're going to watch a very exciting simulation on how power is generated. Uh, we're going to use hydropower as an example in our simulation. Now remember from our lesson plan, now remember from our lesson plan, we talked about how hydropower is generated by damming water and letting water flow through a penstock and that's exactly what we're going to see over here. So, we once again have a dam um, that is situated. Um, we have uh, turbines uh, that are present over here. We have the transformers here. And now we're going to show you a very in-depth view about what actually takes place uh, to generate hydro power. So, we have here uh, something called a penstock. We have a valve. We can see that the water is actually flowing down into the valve. I'm going to just stop the simulation here for just a moment to explain some things. If you look at the water that's flowing down here, it turns a turbine that's located at the bottom. As this turbine turns, the shaft over here also turns as well, and you have a generator sitting here which is actually generating the power. This is the AC generator that we talked about before and that's what's located here. So this turbine, as the water flows through this turbine, this turbine, uh, this turbine turns. Now why does the water flow? The water flow because the water level that's located here on that end is much higher than the water level over here. As a result, the water will flow through this penstock and this is called a penstock. So as soon as the valve opens, the water flows when the water flows, it turns the turbine and power is generated. If you don't want any power generated, all you've got to do is turn the valve off and this generator will not generate any power anymore. Okay? So that's the important thing to understand about how hydro power, water, is used to generate electrical power.
Now we're going to see a close-up view of the generator. As the water flows down through the penstock, we're going to see how it fills the generator, the shaft, corresponding shaft is turning. And as we, as we go down, we're now able to see a generator that's being used here to generate the actual power itself. So, the important thing to understand here is that this is how the power is actually generated. The power generated then flows from the generator to the transformer. Remember our lesson plan on transmission efficiency. It must go through a step-up transformer. And then from a step-up transformer, it is then sent to transmission lines, as we've seen before. Now, these are transmission towers that are located. There's usually a huge substation that is located here, which does all the transformation of power. We have not shown that in the simulation, to keep it simple. But basically what happens now is that Power is now flowing on these wires through these transmission towers and eventually comes down to, um, to a substation. We have shown a very simplistic view. These are massive substations that are located here that drop the power from the 500 kilovolts that is traveling on to approximately about 1000 kilovolts. And then from there, it goes, it, there's another step down transformer before it gets to your home where the voltages are dropped to 240 volts and 120 volts respectively. Okay? And that's what we're seeing here. He said these are the step-down transformers that are in place. But don't imagine that they're just one of these. These things are massive. They're huge substations that basically drop the power down. Power goes to your home and in turn you can then use the power to light up a lamp or uh, the fridge or whatever it might be. And this ends the simulation on power generation. Thank you.